thank you very much for joining this session. I know it's been a long day uh, for all of us. Uh, the topic that Getter does here is home automation with impunity. I have so many things that I would like to share with you, so I just want to get started on time. Um, my name is Lono Navi. I'm a senior software engineer at Consuku Group. Uh, the company is specialized in providing services related to embedded Linux uh, products. Uh, we have expertise in various open source project, uh, projects. Uh, my role there as a senior software engineer is uh, primarily focused on the Octo project and Open Embedded. Uh, if you're here uh, on Friday for the Yocto Dev Summit, I'll have another talk uh, explaining uh, how you can build custom Linux distributions for NVIDIA Teg Tegra devices. Uh, the company is based, uh, it has a uh, headquarter in San Jose, California. However, we're distributed uh, all around the world. I'm personally coming from Povdiv, Bulgaria. Um, the agenda for the talk today uh, is uh, of course, we're going to speak about home automation and Imputity. Um, how many of you are familiar with Imputity? Can you raise your hands? All right, that's perfect. I've got a few slides uh, with introduction to Imputity because uh, this talk is for beginners, so even if someone doesn't have an experience with Imputity, that's fine, you're on the right place. We'll do a brief introduction to Imputity so you have a good understanding about the protocol by the end of this uh, presentation. After that, I would like to share with, with you my experience um, in um, various challenges uh, regarding data serialization. And I would like to uh, show you how popular open source projects for home automation, such as uh, uh, Home Assistant and OpenHub, provide conventions and support conventions so that your embedded devices, Internet of Things, uh, that communicate over impunity can implement this convention and um, talk to the uh, popular open source home automation platforms. Um, I have a few demonstrations, uh, one with Home Assistant, another one with OpenHub 2. Uh, I've recorded videos which I will play, uh, just to make sure that nothing will go wrong. <laughs> and uh, finally, uh, we'll do a few conclusions and there will be time for uh, questions and hopefully answers from my side. All right, um, this is, um, the, these are the trends in uh, protocols for communication between machines um, in the past 10 years. As you can see here, uh, as you can see, the popularity of impunity is rising. It's rising rapidly compared to um, various uh, other protocols. And there is an explanation for this. Uh, keep, uh, keep in mind this. Uh, a few slides later, I'll explain why this is happening, in my opinion. Also, uh, nowadays there are a lot of um, uh, open source home automation platforms uh, which you can install at your home and use. Like um, five or ten years ago, this was not the case. Uh, and a lot of people created uh, various platforms. Uh, often people just started from scratch because there was uh, not an appropriate open source platform for home automation on the market at that time. However, today, uh, the situation is completely different. There are a lot of home automation platforms that are free and open source software, and uh, there are some of them that are having a huge community and a lot of, uh, lot of useful features. Uh, so if you are starting with home automation nowadays, you have, uh, you have plenty of choices, and the good thing about uh, open source is that you have the freedom to switch from one platform to another. So, uh, as I've promised, a brief introduction to Imputity as a protocol. It's a lightweight published subscribe machine to machine protocol on top of TCP IP. Uh, it has, um, it's a real time, near real time communication. Yeah, engineeringly speaking, it's, I think the correct, uh, uh, the correct way to present this is a near, near real time communication between various clients and a broker. Uh, Imputity has a small, uh, source code uh, footprint, which makes it convenient not only for devices on which you run Linux, but also for uh, uh, microcontrollers. Uh, and a lot of people, including me, are using Imputity on Arduino or Arduino compatible devices. Uh, there are three versions. Um, um, of the protocol, we're going to speak about them. Uh, there's also um, Imputity for sensor networks over UDP. This is something that's out of the scope of this presentation. And the good thing about Imputity is that it is already supported uh, very well by uh, the popular open source uh, home automation platforms that I've mentioned in the previous slide. 
uh, particularly by Home Assistant and Open Hub. Uh, I also have uh, just a single slide for Demotix at the end. Uh, it's, uh, MQTT is also supported in Demotix. Let's have a look at the milestones uh, for MQTT. Uh, MQTT isn't something new. Uh, MQTT has been around for uh, 20 years, and since 2010, uh, it has become a, a royalty-free uh, license for the protocol. And if you remember the, the, the first graphic that I've showed you and the rise of popularity of MQTT, in my opinion, uh, this is because MQTT nowadays is royalty-free and more and more people are using it. There are a lot of implementations for uh, client libraries, of course, for free and open source uh, software MQTT brokers, uh, which we'll briefly discuss later on. Um, in 2014, MQTT version 3.11 uh, became a standard. It's a, also an ISO standard. Uh, since April this year, we have MQTT version 5. So we have 3.1, 3.11, and 5. Uh, probably some of you are wondering, hey, what happened to MQTT 4? Well, MQTT 4 doesn't exist <laughs> because uh, the 8-bit uh, unsigned value that represents the protocol level in the connect packet package has been already occupied by protocol version 3.11. Therefore, the latest version is MQTT 5. By the way, all the slides uh, th that you see here have been already uploaded. There will be also recordings uh, uh, from this talk. Uh, you can go to the um, website of the conference to download the slides, the, the, the same version that you see here. MQT has several important op uh, operations. Connect, obviously this is the first thing that any clan has to do. It has to connect to the broker. Uh, when you connect something, you should have the option to disconnect it. Of course, MQT has this operation. Uh, subscribe and sub unsubscribe are um, in the heart of MQTT because MQTT works with topics. Each message has a topic, and this operation allow your clients to subscribe to certain topics, which means that they'll start receiving any messages with this, these particular uh, topics, or to unsubscribe. And of course, publish is the operation which allows your client to publish um, an MQTT message to other interested uh, clients, and the broker is responsible for this. Probably uh, this was not the best explanation, therefore I did this very, very simple diagram. So what we have here in the center, we have an MQTT broker. This is important to know about MQTT. Uh, all the clients connect to an MQTT broker. They publish the um, you know, MQTT messages to the broker, and the broker is the one responsible for delivering those messages to the interested clients based on the subscription that each client has done when he has uh, Connect after he has connected to the broker. So uh, this is a very simple example. You see uh, several MQTT clients connected to the MQTT broker. Each client can uh, send and uh, receive uh, messages. However, each message is going to the broker in, in, the, in this scenario. So here is a simple explanation of the MQTT message. Uh, we have a topic. Um, this is the topic here. Um, well, I'll explain you the levels and uh, how the uh, topic is, uh, uh, should be generated uh, in the next slide. There, there is a payload. The payload could be text or binary. Uh, for the particular examples uh, that we're going to uh, have a look at, uh, for home automation, uh, we'll be uh, dealing with text payloads of the messages. Quality of service is something really cool in uh, MQD, so you can mark the quality of service per per message when you're publishing uh, the message to the MQTT broker. There are three levels. The first level is zero, which means that the message that you are publishing will be received by the interested clients at most once. And as you can guess, this means that some clients might not receive it. Uh, if you want to make sure that the, the message is going to be received, you can use uh, quality of service one. This means that uh, the message will be received by the interested clients at least once. However, with quality of service one, there is an option that some clients might receive uh, the message more than once. And if you want to be sure that the message is going to be received exactly once, quality of service two is what you need. However, keep in mind that depending on the MQTT broker that you are using, uh, some brokers might not support uh, uh, quality of service two. And so uh, my recommendation is when you're picking up um, an op uh, open source or non-open source implementation of MQTT broker, check the documentation to make sure that the broker supports 
uh, the quality of service that you need. And there is a retained flag, which uh, is a Boolean value. It could be true or false. The idea of the retained messages is that um, the broker stores these messages and, the, and keeps them uh, so that uh, if a new client subscribes for uh, this message later on, later after the message has been sent, uh, the broker will uh, take the responsibility and uh, deliver this message to the newly subscribed broker. This is um, uh, especially convenient for home automation. Uh, the, the most basic example, a temperature sensor. The temperature sensor sends an MQTT, publishes an, an MQTT message when the temperature has been changed. You don't need to, ch to publish the, the temperature on each second. Uh, you only need it to be published when the temperature has changed. Uh, so, th and sometimes the temperature might stay the same for hours. No need to publish again and again uh, a message. But if you publish this message with the retained flag set to true, the broker will keep this um, this message, and when another client interested in finding out the temperature subscribes to the broker, the broker will deliver the last known good value of this temperature. Um, another thing is that uh, in certain cases, you might need to delete a uh, retained message. Uh, it's quite simple to do it. You just um, publish another message with the same topic and an empty payload. Last will and testament. Uh, this is another cool feature that MQTT supports. So when you, when you connect your client to the broker, uh, you can um, uh, create a message as a will. And the broker, uh, if the broker detects that your client has been ungracefully disconnected, the broker will use this message that has been provided um, when the, your broker connected to notify other interested clients that uh, your, your client is no, no, uh, not existing anymore. Uh, this is a convenient feature for devices running on batteries because you, can, you might run out of batteries and your client might disappear, your, your device might disappear from the network. In this case, the broker will detect that the device is not, uh, not available and notify the other interested clients. Of course, it's also convenient for detecting failures and power outages for uh, home automation scenarios. And the most important thing about MQTD are the MQTD topics. Uh, the, the topics are divided into levels. So when you, uh, when you publish an MQTD message, you have uh, to specify, um, you, you, ha you have the option to specify different levels. And for home automation, this is really convenient. Um, the, the topics and the wildcards are important, not, when you not that important when you publish, but they're super important when you receive messages. Uh, so when you subscribe for a given, for a, from a given topic, you can use a wild card. And um, this wild card, it's like a regular expression, will match various topics. This way, your client will uh, receive not only uh, messages for a certain, for a one and only topic, but for a various topics that matches these uh, criteria. Uh, so uh, here, here are the examples. The, the, first, uh, the first topic here is with bedroom, so it's home slash bedroom. This is for single room. However, you can have the same thing going on for your living room, for your kitchen, and so on. So you can use the single level wildcard uh, with the plus sign. This means that you're going to receive uh, all messages with topics that have this level and this level and whatever level is between them. And of course, uh, you can have multiple level wildcard uh, like this. This means we'll just, you just receive all the messages started with, with the prefix home in this example. Security is always important in the Internet of Things. People often say that uh, S in IoT stands for security. And uh, this is not the case with MQTT. MQTT has uh, security uh, because there is a, a transport encryption with SSL of the messages. You can have authentication with username and password. And you also can have authorization with active control lists, uh, which means that you can restrict uh, certain topics and, um, and users. You can define which user has uh, access to this topic or that topic. Um, this, is, um, this is convenient way when you are creating a system with uh, multiple users. Even in home automation, uh, sometimes you, you have multiple users of your home and you would like 
to uh, restrict the access on a protocol level. And Mqtd has these features enabled. Of course, they're implemented by the Mqtd broker of your choice. A few words about Mqtd 5, what's new, uh, new there? Uh, it has better error reporting. Uh, there are some uh, metadata and user properties. They're uh, providing uh, request response interactions, which is something new. Uh, share subscription and uh, better performance for scalability. Uh, in home automation, the way I use MQTD, uh, scalability isn't that important because I'm pretty much I'm running uh, MQTD server at my home for my own needs. However, if you're building uh, uh, a cloud application, scalability becomes a problem because you might have uh, millions of users that are generating uh, thousands of messages per user, which creates a huge amount of messages. A few words about popular open source MQTD brokers. Mosquito, this is my uh, preferred MQTD broker for home automation because it's written in C, it's quite fast and quite simple to use. Uh, it um, it uh, supports active control lists, so uh, it's a very good choice for home automation if you are planning to install uh, something just for your own need at home, I would recommend you Mos uh, Mosquito. Moscow is written in, uh, uh, in um, JavaScript, which is uh, quite modern for uh, all web developers our, uh, out there. Um, I did another talk a year ago uh, doing a um, review of all those, all those brokers. Uh, so uh, the, the video of, uh, from this presentation is available. You can have a look at it if you want to learn uh, more details about uh, certain open source brokers and their communities. Also, there are a lot of popular open source Mqtd client libraries. Uh, the PAHO project is a project of the uh, Eclipse IoT Foundation. Uh, it provides implementation for client libraries for Mqtd in various languages, uh, which uh, greatly simplifies devel development because you can just grab this open source library and use it without uh, worrying about implementing the, the, the client itself. Of course, there is a Node.js open source library and Arduino open source client, which I'm personally using for some Internet of Things that I have created, which I will show you later in the slides. So um, we covered Mqtd as a protocol. I hope it's clear for all of us uh, what Mqtd is. At the beginning, I've asked you, and I saw that most of you are, uh, have previous experience with Mqtd. As you, can, uh, as you have seen from these slides, Mqtd is a great near real time uh, machine to machine protocol. It, um, solves the issue how to um, uh, send messages and exchange messages between machines. However, uh, Mqtd does not define a specific convention for the payload. The payload of the Mqtd message could be binary, it could be text. However, you are free to send any kind of message. Uh, freedom is a good thing, however, when you have to do integration between various components, you have to work with a convention. Therefore, uh, I would like to show you a couple of conventions here. The first one is defined by Home Assistant. Home Assistant is an open source home automation platform. It's written on Python. Uh, it started uh, six years ago. Um, it has a huge community, a uh, huge number of contributors, excellent documentation, and very active forums. Uh, the source code is available at GitHub under Apache 2.0 license. Uh, it's perfect to run on Raspberry Pi. Uh, there are a couple of options how to install it on a Raspberry Pi. Uh, the old option was uh, a, a distribution called Hasbian. As the name, the name suggests, it's a derivative of Raspbian, which is a derivative of Debian. Uh, in more modern times, uh, um, the Home Assistant community came up with something called HasIO. Uh, which is a basically an image nowadays built uh, with build root that contains a container, and within, within this container, Home Assistant is running. Uh, Hasayo uh, tries to simplify the getting started process for, uh, for users of uh, Home Assistant. There are some plugins that you can configure and install. Uh, also, of course, you can uh, manually install Home Assistant. That's uh, another option. Uh, Home Assistant images are also available for Intel Nuke, uh, Odroid, Orange Pi Prime, and of, uh, virtual machines. So these are devices popular in the maker community. How many of you are using uh, Home Assistant? All right, this is a fair number. Um, so Home Assistant has a lot of features. Uh, I'm not even familiar with most of them. However, there are a few uh, features that I believe are really, really special. 
The first thing is that Home Assistant already has an integration of 1,000 components. So if you buy a device uh, fr from a shop, most probably this device is already supported by Home Assistant. Um, this is because Home Assistant has a, a huge community and a lot of people are putting efforts to integrate devices into it. Uh, the other important thing, uh, an advantage compared to some of the other open source uh, home automation platform is the authentication with user profile and uh, password as well as the option for uh, second phase authentication. There are also automatic updates of the default um, user inter interface called Lavalize. Uh, of course, you can modify it. If you want, you can modify it, but then you have to, uh, be, uh, you have to, to make some extra steps while updating it. However, for this particular presentation, the important things are automatic discovery of devices and excellent in integration of MQTT components. So let's first have a look at the MQTT components. There are uh, a lot of MQTT components that Home Assistant supports out of the box. Uh, in this presentation, we'll focus with ex a few examples, uh, about three, three of them. Uh, these are uh, for regular sensor, for binary sensor, which means yes or no sensor, and um, MQTD light component, because the MQTD light component shows you how you can control devices over MQTD that are integrated in Home Assistant. So Home Assistant Discovery is a feature that allows you to easily configure devices, uh, your new devices in the network. The idea is that you have Home Assistant running on a device in your uh, local area network at your home, then you buy a device, uh, for example, IKEA Trot Free, which I'm also using, and um, integrate uh, them with uh, Home Assistant uh, by, by the automatic discovery, which means that as soon as you plug the new devices and configure them in your network, Home Assistant will detect them and show, show you a notification that you have this new device. And the great thing about this is that it supports MQTD. So you can make your own device that works with MQTD and implement the home automation discovery uh, procedure so that you, your new device will be automatically discovered when you use it. Um, so in order this to happen, your Internet of Things have to provide over MQTD a specific configuration message. Uh, also, each device must have a unique identification, just to make sure that you are not, uh, uh, you, you, uh, just to make sure that you can identify uniquely the device that you're using. Uh, the MQTD discovery has to be enabled. There are a couple of ways to do it. Uh, here, the example is in the configuration YAML file, uh, which is the main configuration file for uh, Home Assistant. So you have to go there. You have to put a broker uh, and uh, MQTD broker, and after that, to enable discovery and to set a discovery prefix. If you're using, um, if you're using HASIO, a demonstration that I'm going to show you later on, uh, you, you don't even need to mess with the configuration file. This is something that you can do uh, from the user interface. However, considering that we are a developer conference, probably uh, configuration file is not a problem for the people in the room. Okay, so uh, this is the specific format of the MQTD topic, uh, specifically for the message uh, for the discovery of your device. You have the discovery prefix, you saw how it's configured over here. After that, you have a component. The, comp the component must be something that's already supported uh, in Home Assistant, which, which means this must be a component from the list of components that you saw on the previous slide. Um, the node ID is just an optional level. It's not used in Home Assistant, but sometimes might be uh, useful for other systems using these devices within your uh, local area network. And of course, the object ID is the unique identification of your device. Here is an example with an open source hardware development board that I have designed with KiCad. Super simple board, ESP8266, uh, DHT22 uh, sensor. Uh, it's a maker board. Uh, the, the default firmware that I've wrote and is uh, written, uh, is running on the, uh, on the board, uh, sends a topic to home assistant uh, slash sensor slash device ID. Here in red, I just put a, a fake ID of the device. However, the, the device ID is generated out of the, the device ID provided by ESP8266. Um, and uh, after that, with MD5, I'm creating a hash so that nobody will understand the actual, hopefully nobody will understand the actual uh, device ID. 
and uh, below is the payload of the message. Pr pretty much the payload describes what kind of component is, is this, uh, what it sh uh, sh uh, should be done, and so on. I have to say thanks to the people contributing to this project because uh, it's an entirely open source project and actually initially the home assistant discovery um, procedure was uh, added not by me but, but by contributors from the community. And uh, here, here is how uh, you have to enable MQTT and to configure it in home assistant in easy steps. This is from Hasio from the plugins. You have to install MQTT broker. There's a plugin for the, for the MQTT broker. After that, you have to de to define this configuration saying what is uh, the, the the username that the uh, QT broker should use and finally when it's done you start getting information from uh, the devices within your um, within your network however of course you, you go through the, the step that automatically those those uh, devices are discovered and you have to press finish to make sure that they will appear a few words about um, each of the uh, three examples, sensors that I would, uh, three uh, example MQTT components that I would like to review. Uh, the first one is um, the, the most simple MQTT uh, sensor. This is the one that I'm using to implement the uh, reading of the temperature. It, um, it requires a configuration of the state topic, which means you have to say what is the topic on, you, on which you get the information from. Um, the payload of the message is uh, the sensor value. It could be plain text or JSON. It's a matter of configuration. Uh, there are a number of other, um, of other configurations that you can set. For example, uh, the um, uh, unit of measurement. So you can say whether uh, the value that's coming is in Fahrenheit or Celsius, depending on the region where you uh, live. Uh, this was introduced in Home Assistant 07. Uh, so this is long ago. Uh, and um, there is a perfect documentation uh, on the link below. So here is the example of how it actually works. Here is a topic starting with a prefix workgroup followed by the next level, the identification of the device. After that, I'm saying that it measures the air temperature. In, uh, instead of air, it could be water because I can, to, to this specific board, I can also attach a, a DS18B20 sensor that is waterproof and measure the temperature in, uh, let's say, a fish tank. Uh, it sends a payload as an MQTT, very straightforward, and also the humidity. Um, is having a similar configuration with topic and JSON payload. Super simple and super efficient. The binary sensor is another type of sensor. It's even more simpler. It's useful for um, sensors that act as an alar alarm, which means it has only two, st uh, two states on and off. Uh, the example here is with uh, another open source hardware board that I'm using with MQ135 uh, uh, gas sensor for monitoring indoor air quality. Uh, so this sensor is uh, it's a cheap sensor that's not very accurate. However, with uh, good calibration, you can detect, for example, that there is a smoke and then raise an alarm. Uh, an alarm. Uh, so the payload in this case is just the plain text on and off. MQTT light. Um, allows you uh, to define an imputed component that is capable of um, turning on and off the lights. It supports uh, uh, three different um, message schemas. It's particularly convenient for controlling 12 or 5 volt addressable or non addressable LED strips. Uh, because Home Assistant has integration with uh, uh, um, Smart speakers such as Alexa, you can, after, after doing an MQTT integration of an MQTT light uh, component, you can, after that, use uh, voice control to say, for example, Alexa, turn on the lights. Here are the uh, supported MQTT lights uh, schemas. So there are plenty of things that you can do. Of course, the most simple is just to set the color of the RGB LED strip. So here is an example. Uh, I have a board, again, with ESP8266, uh, which communicates with Home Assistant over MQTT. Um, here is uh, an example with the command topic. In red uh, on the first line is the um, uh, uh, example identification of the device. Uh, so the payload is the cover, RGB values for the cover. And when you send this payload, the Internet of Things, uh, in, in this case, would uh, receive the message through the broker and set the cover that you want. And uh, there are a couple of photos. The first photo is um, the plain configuration where you just have uh, the, this Internet of Things uh, thing, uh, uh, controlling uh, a 12 volt RGB LED strip. This is the most simple uh, non addressable uh, LED strip that you can find on the market. And then the other setup is with Alexa so that you can turn it on and off with um, voice commands. 
Um, so far, we've covered Home Assistant and the convention that Home Assistant defines for uh, MQT components. I'm personally a huge fan of Home Assistant convention, primarily because I'm, uh, I have been using it for a while, so uh, I'm used to it. However, um, in the open source world, uh, other convention exist, and one of those conventions is the Homey convention. Um, it does exactly the same thing, define a, um, a, a standard format of the MQTT payload so that various Internet of Things can follow it to integrate uh, together. Uh, it has been started in 2015. It exists in uh, GitHub. Everything is there. It has a very good documentation. And, uh, again, there is a specific form format of the configuration MQTT topic uh, with which you can, uh, again, implement an automatic discovery of the device. Uh, here you get, have an identification of the physical device, a, a, a node, and of course a specific property. Um, the payload and the MQTT message uh, uh, it can be one of the following uh, value types. It can be a string, integer, float, boolean, enum, or color. Of course, color is the most interesting because there are a lot of things that you can adjust in the color. A quick example, again, uh, it's it's pretty much the same example that you've already seen uh, with the convention defined by Home Assistant, but this, this is with the Homey convention. Again, you have a specific topic according to the convention, and uh, the payload is the actual value. So uh, OpenHAP2 is uh, another open source uh, home automation platform uh, which uses both the Home Assistant and the Homey convention. How many of you are using OpenHAP? Uh, just a few of you? All right. I'm personally using both uh, OpenHub and Home Assistant. I used it for a while, uh, but I plan to continue doing it um, after a few months. Uh, so OpenHub is particularly popular in Europe. Uh, it's, a, it's an old project. It's written in Java. There have been major changes between uh, OpenHub version 1 and 2, and since version 2.5, there is an excellent, uh, 2.4, there is an excellent support uh, for MQTT. There are a lot of uh, supported things, uh, thousands of supported things, a big community again. Uh, OpenHub 2 can be installed pretty much on, uh, on any machine that runs um, uh, Java, including uh, Microsoft Windows, Mac OS, and Blue Linux distributions. Of course, it's another distribution that's perfect to run on Raspberry Pi. There are also mobile applications for Android and iOS. This is an advantage compared to some of the other open source uh, systems out there. Uh, so OpenHub 2 supports both the Home con Convention and the Home Assistant. You have the option to select which one of, uh, of those conventions to use. Um, the process for of adding MQT broker in Internet of Things in, um, in um, OpenHub is easy. Here are a few uh, slides you can, how you can do it. You define the, the broker. This way, OpenHubs connect to this broker. After that, you define the Internet of Things or discover them manually uh, or discover them automatically. These slides are uh, explaining how you can do this manually. Last but not least, Domotics. It's another popular open source uh, home automation platform. Uh, it's written in C++, again, perfect to run on my favorite Raspberry Pi. Started seven years ago. Uh, code, uh, the source code is available in GitHub. Uh, however, the support for MQTT in Domotics, it's a little bit more tricky because basically you have two topics, uh, two default topics, Domotics in and Domotics out. So this is how Domotics communicates with all devices within network, your network over MQTT. Um, it's compared to, to the other two that examples that we already had reviewed, I don't think this is so convenient. However, they have a good documentation which you have a look, you can have a look for details. So now I would like to show you a quick demo. Just a second. So these are two videos, pre-recorded videos. All right, um, this is how I configure uh, HasIO. This is um, uh, this is installation of Raspberry Pi Zero. In general, it's not a good idea to implement it on Raspberry Pi Zero, but I have done it. It's not a good idea because it runs slowly. It's okay for testing. However, you better use Raspberry Pi 3 or uh, 3B or B+. Uh, this is uh, implementation of um, uh, the Wi-Fi 
uh, manager library for Arduino, very popular library that creates an access point on your Internet of Things and provides you a user-friendly interface on your smartphone, uh, personal computer or tablet so that you can connect to the device and set credentials to the MQT broker for uh, later on. And um, of course you, you select your Wi-Fi network and also the MQTT broker, and um, it also pr uh, provides you information about uh, the device ID. Uh, once you have connected your Internet of Things to the network and Home Assistant, you need to do the integration, which means to, because uh, the first thing that you saw was installation of the Mosquito broker, then you need to do the installation. Uh, the integration of MQTT, I'm doing it right here typing in the IP of the broker in my, um, in my network. The username and the password here is enable discovery. It didn't work out from the first time, even on the video. Uh, however, I didn't cut it out because I want to show you the, the real thing. Uh, once the discovery is done, automatically you see the device that has been already configured, so you just press finish and uh, it will appear in your network over here, yeah. And you can follow the temperature. And um, this is just a quick test to show that, yeah, actually this sensor works. You can see here the Raspberry Pi, the sensor itself, and a hair dryer. Perfect setup. <laughs> right. So now the other, the other demonstration. And the other demonstration is with OpenHub. It's similar procedure, however, I'm doing the steps manually here to add the device. Uh, again, um, I'm adding the impurity binding. Before that, I have installed uh, Mosquito as a broker, although OpenHub is coming with Moquette, which is an implement another implementation of impurity broker, but as I told you during the slides, I prefer, uh, prefer um, Mosquito. Again, the, the standard configurations for the broker, the, the port of the broker. One thing I didn't mention, but it's important, the brokers, most of the brokers also, also support uh, WebSocket communication, so you can receive and publish MQT messages directly from your HTML5 pages nowadays. Now, I'm adding here uh, JavaScript transformation. Well, this transformation is used to transform the data for between Fahrenheit and Celsius to, to make it uh, more user friendly in uh, the Home Assistant, um, in the Home Assistant, uh, sorry, in the OpenHub user interface. Uh, in the partic particular demonstration, I'm using the paper UI uh, because OpenHub provides several user interfaces and you can switch between them. Okay, this is how I install the JavaScript that does the transformation. And finally, I'm adding the generic thing. Just, just to repeat that uh, OpenHub also supports automatic discovery, but this is just a different approach because I want to show you what is happening uh, if you decide to, to do it manually. Now, these are the, the channels for the temperature and humidity on which we will receive data. And the bridge, of course, is the MQTT broker. So I'm, I'm here receiving, setting that I'm going to receive a text value, and after that, the, the JavaScript transformation that I have already installed will take care to transform this value in the value that I want to be properly represented in uh, OpenHub uh, interface. I'm showing you all this to show you that actually uh, if you have a, an option for automatic discovery for the end user, it's far easier to, to, to do this approach. Yeah, all right. Let's switch back to the slides. Okay. And... Uh, a few conclusions. So, obviously, MQTT is a great uh, protocol for neural communication between machines. Uh, however, uh, we need a convention 
to, to make sure that we can integrate various devices from various vendors in various open source uh, platforms. Home Assistant uh, already has uh, this convention done. Also Homey, of course, these con conventions are evolving over the time. Um, uh, the automatic discovery of devices is one of the, I would call, keyword features for Internet of Things because this makes things easier for end users. Thank you very much. Um, these are a few useful uh, links. All the slides are already available. We're a little bit ahead of schedule, but this is the last talk in this room, so if you have any questions, I would love to hear them.